Hello everybody and welcome to the second series of SketchUp House Tutorial. This series actually entitles that I build a house directly from scratch in SketchUp just to show you what it's like to actually um, draw and yeah basically to draw a three-dimensional model of a house in SketchUp. Now this particular house um, I actually went throughout the whole week just trying and last some of last week just trying things out figuring things what house I'd like to dis like to draw for you guys um, brainstorming many ideas and I finally came to something because what I actually want is something sort of simple yet something with enough that gives you all mostly all the principles I wanted to cover with you guys in SketchUp. So, another thing before we start is just, you know, you just um, have, like, basically this one will be a one-story house with um, three bedrooms. But like I said, you know, I mean, um, this will be a small house, about just a little over um, a thousand square feet. But, um, it's be a small house, but still have plenty of um, things to go over and sketch it because even a small house still has all of the things that I want to cover. It doesn't have to be a large house because the only difference between a large house and a small house is that um, a large house just has um, the same things, only just more of it, like more windows, more rooms, more walls, etc. Without further ado, let's get started. All right. So, yeah, you start up SketchUp with your SketchUp plane. You see you have a default character in the far left. Well, I mean, within the positive, positive quadrant. Because SketchUp is broken up into quadrants. And also there's a three-dimensional axis as well. See, X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z. What I usually like to do is stay all in positive, all both within all three with the positive X, positive Y, and positive Z. And besides it's also helpful when you do shadowing and other and or when you want to take this file and put it into other files like take a SketchUp file and for example put it in a Maya file. I mean I haven't actually done that before but there are some people who I know who have but yeah let's um... alright so I find this person I mean they default a person for scale, but I sort of find it annoying and want to get rid of it. Easily done. Right click, erase, and there, your person's gone. Now, in terms of drawing, you, as you can see, my cursor already has a pencil tool. You might not be able to see um, it in my toolbar, just on top of my screen, in case there's like a sign, but the, the button you will push, if it's not already a pencil, is a pencil basically. It looks like a red pencil. You click on it and then you choose your viewing space. So I pretty much have my viewing space in order. Alright, um, let's see. And then we just test out the lines just to see where we are on the drawing space. As I can see I'm hovering high overhead just want to see how far I am from the origin. Okay, that's good calibration. She said, like, or when people import your model, they're not searching endlessly for it. I mean, that has happened before, and it is annoying. Where their model's way the heck over there, hundreds of feet, and it's frustrating. I know, because in default, the uh, viewing space is pretty close. So you'd have to do a lot of panning and zooming to see it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, those are just some of the basic controls in SketchUp. So this looks good right here. Okay. This looks good. Now, um, oh, yeah, and another thing. You see how thin this line is? Go to up to the very top bar here and go to View, Edge Style, Profiles. Make sure Profiles is on when you model. So you actually can see what you're doing. As you can see, the line got thicker. So, um, 
And another thing is when you're, um, before you really get started and say if you're designing a house or whatever, um, before you start drawing, you probably want a good idea of what you want to draw in your house. I mean, just for, just for a good time's sake where, um, you're not just doing a bunch, of, you're not going through endless hoops just trying to make something work. However, it's been done and I've spontaneously drawn in SketchUp before, um, but, um, and, and it actually can be, it can be better, I mean, no lie, but in this particular house, I want, um, kind of an open living and dining and, and kitchen plan, and I want that in the center, because, I mean, this is going to be a very compact house, and a little over a thousand square feet, it's going to have three bedrooms and two full baths, um, I'm hoping to put a be able to fit a chimney in, and um, this one also. So this one will only be a one story with no basement. But I mean, in the mi sort of in the middle here, this is where I want my kitchen, living, dining. Well, I think I'll have. My, I want my living room in front. Secondary bedrooms here, master and garage here. So that's kind of what my house is going to look like. So it's going to have sort of an L-shaped pattern to it. And that's a very common pattern in most houses, actually. Um, sort of an l shape, where the garage is the thing that sticks out. And, I mean, to make it... I'll, put, I'll have other videos where it shows all the niceties. This video is just to show you how to draw a floor plan in SketchUp using what you know. So, okay, so I think I know what I want. Um, Alright, you know, let's actually start out with the living room. Let's see just how far out we are. And, I mean, um, think of, like, good sizes. I mean, for example, um, what would be a great size for a living room that the door will, that actually you'll have to use sacrifice areas for your front door? So, I mean... Obviously, a 10-foot living room wouldn't do good with a front door right in it because, I mean, this house is going to be, um, this house is basically going to be a very small house, so we want to make it so then we have enough space still. So, as you can see in the length, in the length column, I think probably 16 or so feet, at least, at least 15 feet um, will do good if there's a front door. Because then you can allow like four or so feet for um, maybe five feet for the front entrance and the rest of it for the living room. Let's try 16 feet. So just go into your keyboard. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll just pick an area anywhere on the plane. Oh, sorry. Just right now I'm just having mine on the line. Um, but anywhere in the plane would be good. And, um,. Type in, you have click and just hold, um, click once, as you can see, click once and then drag the mouse. You don't have to hold down click, um, actually it works without holding it down. So, And then type in, say for example 16 in your keyboard, and then go to like the where it's the apostrophe sign. As you can see in the lower right hand corner where it says length, see how um, it has it? And let's add a few inches to it. Um, eight. Say I want sixteen foot eight. I mean, kind of arbitrary, but because eight inches. As you can see, for inches, I did not write any little lines because if you use architecture, if you use um, sim simple conventions for SketchUp or even architectural feet and inches, it will default be default by inches, so you don't have to put the inch symbol on it. If you wanted to, though, just shift and hold the apostrophe, and as you can see, look, it has like the quotations. That is the inch symbol. So there's the foot symbol and the inch symbol. Now enter, but you don't have to do the inch symbol. See? Enter, and it automatically makes that line from where you are. Say I want a square here. As you can see where I am here. Where it says on red axis on the pencil line. There it's defaulting because it had the very last measurement I punched in. We'll do that for now. And 
then we'll just come down here and there's a box. Looking good. Now, um, for usually whenever I do things like sometimes I want it, I know I want my dining room and my kitchen. I'm not exactly sure what sizes I want in some of these rooms, but I know I want them there. So sometimes I'll actually work on other rooms adjacent so then I can get a feel for how much of a space I'll need. So we'll do it that way for now. And what we'll do here is, um, I'm going to get rid of these ugly lines here. So basically that's a living room. And um, as you can see on, the, on this second top toolbar here, see where it says offset. Frame construction generally can be like four inches, and we'll go with that for now. And it's and it good. It accommodates a small house. So what happened here is I click. I go in the center of the plane, click on it. As you can see, I, when I roll the mouse back and forth, it does this or it does this. Hover outwards if you don't want to cut into your room and do as he did when um, you were typing in for the door for door for the size of the living room like just punch in the number four or six or however thick you want your walls and as you can see where it says in the lower right measurements four and it's already default by inches see watches it does it without me typing in inches so, but it does the exact same thing okay so Say that I have no idea how big I want my kitchen or dining, but I kind of want a square house in a way, so we'll do it that way. Okay, let's move on to some of the other rooms now. And I know I want my secondary ba bedroom, bathroom, and other bedroom here. That will not be too bad. So... I'll start from inside the house. As you can see, I just drew a little bit of line here. And here's what I want. Um, let's see, because this is four inches here, I'll just say, watch me type in 11 foot 4. Just because, I mean, I want my... Um, no, maybe I want some bigger bedrooms. Um... Uh, 13 feet, maybe. And I mean, you can choose whatever s measurements you want for these things, because, I mean, um, just make it practical. But I mean, say, but I mean by 10 feet. What? Didn't type it in. There we are. Alright, so we got one, four inches, okay, so I know I want a fireplace in my, in my living room, so what I can do is just be creative with this and kind of, um, no, because we know chimney is like can be like two foot eight usually and I mean it's gonna be a small sort of a small chimney plus it'll be covered in brick and for now we'll encase it in walls so kinda like that and this is where I know I want the end of my house Let's see, let's put the chimney like in the cent in a central location. Six feet sounds good, so right in here will be my be my chimney. And it'll just be a small chimney. 
And in the meantime, I can make this into a closet. can be five feet. Well, I mean, that's usually how much they are anyway, so we'll keep it at that. But for now, um, before I actually, I'll make a video that actually just coincides with the, as the chimney and fireplace, so um, right now it becomes just as part of the, the wall, but in the meantime you can actually place a uh, closet so you can kind of interlock with it and it also helps keep the house size real house size small so that's good and 11 by 10 feet sounds like a great bedroom size for a small house and as you can see I want to draw more rooms off to here so as you can see I drew this little line here and what else? Um, we'll bring it out because I want it to be a bathroom. Because I want my bathroom in between the two bedrooms. I mean, you can have it any way you want, but um, let's see. And because this is a small house, I want it to be a basic bathroom. So we do know by by um, default, or you know, I mean, sometimes when you draw, when you want to draw a house or your house or whatever, I mean, or any house. Um, you want to look up elements, see how much they are. Like, as I know from a lot of, from good experience, that bathtubs are, in fact, five feet by default. So that makes this, and usually for a little bathroom, it would be the whole length, whole width of the bathroom itself. So we'll make this bathroom five feet, like so. And by minimum, it has maybe like eight feet or something. I mean, if you for a house on the ground maybe if you have like a trailer house maybe it's like um, I don't know seven foot six sometimes bathrooms are seven foot six and I find that a little crammed but um, people have made it work and yeah so let's bring it out to here but it's not but I mean if you want to know sizes of something Go into your, through your own house and measure things. I mean, measure door widths, your bathtub. I mean, anything, or even your refrigerator. You'll learn a lot from just because, I mean, your house is built with standard measurements. Um, no matter where you are. So, I mean, get a ruler out and just have fun with it. Because, I mean, people usually, when they make models, they don't always take into account measurements. So what you see here, this whole area cannot obviously be the bathroom. We want kind of a, we want a bedroom over here, so we kind of want a hallway. And besides, it also makes it for a private um, private family. So as you can see here, three feet, and that is the bare minimum a hallway can possibly be by code. So for now, we'll just make it um, three feet. You know, I mean, who cares? So as you can see, then therefore that does sacrifice some of this bathroom here, seven foot eight. But seven foot eight actually is valid for a size in the bathroom, so we'll stay at that, even though it is rather small. But I mean, you will still have your bathtub, your toilet, and your sink, and that's what I'm shooting for. So what will happen here is um, we will make it over here. So as you can see, there's my bathroom there. Now, um, let's see what else I can do here. Um, I can put a bat. I can put my bedroom here, or a closet here. But what would I do over here? Just thinking for a moment. Oh yeah, and another uh, cool thing you can try is just right-click in the area, 
and um, see go into your grab tool right here your move tool hover over wherever you want like for example this point of origin here push the control key make a copy over here and come over here where I made my guideline and then someone's trying to call me um, I'll just have to see what it is just give me a moment please hello um, Armando oh um, it's fine um, I'm kind of right in the middle of something right real quick uh, could I catch you in 20 minutes Okay, I'll call you in an hour, all right? Okay. All right, uh could I I'll call you in an hour, okay? All right, have a good one. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Sorry about that. That was my buddy Armando. We haven't talked in forever, but um I agree I'll call him right after I'm done here, so sorry about that. But, okay, I changed my mind. I didn't want that there. So, what happened is, um, what I usually like to do is I'll make a bathroom and then I'll put a closet. I usually use my bathrooms for a closet. So, we'll put a closet right in here. And notice how it's just basically a sore thumb sticking out. But um, what I would do is just take this tool here, my offset tool, click in the middle, and then just hover over the surface I want to flush with. So that, and as you can just see, I'm holding it. Look down on the lower right, four inches already, and I didn't even type it in because it's flush. And there we are, there's a closet right in here. Now, um, and then for that, I can actually use that as the bedroom closet, which is pretty cool. Let's see, um, let's bring this out a little more. So I'll ha I want my this will have to be a little bit bigger than this. Well, I mean it doesn't have to be, but I'll just make it a little bit. So basically, just ten feet or something by eleven. Because I like these two flush with one another. Alrighty then. And Armando's such a sweet guy. I like him so much. A great friend. Alright. So basically this is how much I want my house to be. And as I did for the bathroom and the closet, look, at, I just offset it again. And therefore I'll do more, I do erasing some more. And we'll bring the edge out over here. We'll close it off. Now for this one, I will do more drawing, as you can see, because now I actually know how much I want my dining room and my kitchen. So what I'll do is um, I'll just close it off here. So I'll take the pencil tool, click on the corner here, hover over where I want to be in flush with, see where I'm hovering, I'm not clicking, just hovering. And then as you can see that little dotted line is formed there. Here and here. Lots of nitty gritties you have to go over. I know, but um, it is worth it in the end though. It's worth it. So what's gonna happen is um, Okay, so I'll make a little hallway here. Uh, let me think for a moment. Ay, 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 okay. Let us see. Um, 
You know it has to be three feet minimum, so I'll make it that way. Three feet. Bring it out like this. And, alright, so then, um, that means this part of this gets cut off somewhere. I'll just do that there for now. So then, um, here, and just flush it with that. But, as you see, go back, I go back up into the rectangle tool. And I'll just do that. I'll just click and drag. Darn it. And there, so then now we have fireplace area here. And, um, closet here for this bedroom. Possibly your coat closet because there's nothing on this wall, and this is where the front door is going to be. So, um, so you need somewhere where the coat closet is going to be because most houses actually do have coat closets. Especially if you're going to bother to make closets for the bedrooms. And also, your bedrooms need a linen closet because apparently, you know, I mean, you need where your bed sheets are going to be. You also need a place where your shampoos are going to be, your extra deodorants. So, I couldn't think of any other place to put them, so I'll just put them actually over here. Linen closets aren't as deep as regular closets, so I'll just pick in this area here because I want good interlocking. Look in the lower right again, and usually linen closets are only like a foot it's thick, maybe. Maybe a little more, depends. One foot six. Mm. Let's see. I'll actually make this closet as big as this one, so. What else I can do is um, right click on a line and makes it blue. And then. Um, use my move tool and push the control button. See the little plus? See how I move it? It copies the line. Um, make this one foot four. That's usually how deep I make my linen closets anyway. And then I'll just bring this out also. Um, basic. And type in how, how far I want it. And then erase. Darn it! So basically, I have um, my closets, my sec my bedrooms, my bathroom, and then my living room, dining room, kitchen. So what else? What else do I want to do with this? Okay, um, let's measure this real fast. Okay, so that's just more than that's just this plus this wall sector here. Don't want my dining room too crowded because there's going to be door. I want my doors in my dining room. So, um, some people actually make their dining rooms as little as nine or so feet, which I find a little cramped. I'll make this eleven feet to be on the safe side, and that actually leaves about eight feet for the kitchen. I mean, which is good for about good standard horseshoe kitchen. So I'll do it that way. All right, let me see what else we got here. Perfect. Just trying to make proportions right. All righty then. Let's see what else we got. Can do this and chop this off. Because my idea was having sort of an open living and dining room. And I'll elaborate more and better on this when I in future videos. This is just to draw a floor plan. Alright, so that's basically what my house is actually entitled to looking like. But I actually want some other things too. Like, um, for example, a garage, for example, and a master bedroom. Well, I got more, a lot of room for that. I can put them anywhere. I can put my master bedroom back here. Or here. But I mean also in terms of thinking about it, you want your house to kind of look where. Right. So I mean just give your house like maybe good tolerance, you know. Let's 
see, because I mean, give me a minute. I'm thinking right now. Um. Okay. Let us see. I was just here, just gonna have to experiment with the sizes. I mean, it's not. It's not like you know you can look at something or. And just say, oh, here it is. I mean, that's how a lot of people do it, you know. I mean, they just, you know, they assume things. But whenever really when you're looking at houses, you know, I mean, you sort of, you need to actually um, consider, like, sizes and stuff. Because, like, say you want to build a house. I mean, obviously, you have to know the sizes. Good sizes, so... Bring it out like here because what I want is I want a master bedroom here and I want a garage here. And like I said, I wanted my L-shaped house, so this is what it this is what it's gonna entitle. Let's bring you in a few inches. And let's see, I want the same frame plan, so as you can see I use the rectangle tool inside the corner there to outside here same four inches there now let's say I want my garage to be 18 feet and I'll have that as the rest of the house So it, it's a compact house, but um, it works, it works. So here this finishes off the this finishes off the um, parameters of the house. Now we can do a little bit of fill in infill, what I call it. Um, I know that this is gonna be my master bedroom, but also want to know where my master bathroom is going to be. Let's say I want it on this wall here or anywhere. I recommend you doing the bathrooms first just so then um, because say I mean for a little house like this I'm going to have simple bathrooms so um, I mean yeah this house is going to have um, so we'll use the basic five feet that the bathtubs are someone's alarms going off. Well, I live in apartments, so um, there's a parking lot just outside and someone's car is going off. Uh, let's see. That first one was a small bathroom, but I'll make this a little bigger. Uh, more than eight feet. Almost nine feet. Let's see. There we are. And we'll bring this out four inches. And there we have that. And I want to make my, say I want to make my bedroom a square. Go to the square tool, rectangle tool. It's right next to the pencil tool by default, but you might not be able to see it. But it's just on, the, on this toolbar up here, upper left. Or sometimes people's bars are down here, off to the side. Go to your rectangle tool and pull it out. Make sure you're hovering over the line there. And as you can see, it says square. Click. And then we'll just do it like how I usually do rooms there. Alright, so, um, this still is a big garage, and of course we don't want it that big, so we'll do some more things with it. Also, bear in mind, this house has no basement, so um, because of the big garage, we can take advantage of the spaces for um, our HVAC, our water heating system, laundry. Oh yeah, oh, what am I forgetting? That's right, the master bath bedroom doesn't have a closet yet. 
you're going to have to fix that right away. Okay, as you can see here, this is the closet. But I want a walk-in closet. And with a his side and a her side, and I need something big enough, so what I'll do is I'll just bring this out further. Um, see, thinking of it. I'm going to go with two feet for now. And as I always do, I extrude. And say I don't like a line that I'd made, or no, I like it, but it's just too far in or far out. Take the move tool, click on a line. This is really cool, and see how it moves back and forth. Say I want a few inches this way, or and then you know if I want the same one here. By default, you will feel it and stop. Just click. And there you go. That's easily fixed. And I think over here is where I want my laundry station, you know, I mean, in the garage, doesn't, it's probably not the ideal, but um, for a small house, that's probably your answer. Now, um, what else do you, well, I mean, but it make, does make sense, though, because in a garage, that's where most of, that's where mainly your mechanical stuff could be, would be. Why am I keep getting these messages? Okay. Keep getting messages and it's getting kind of old. So, have some, but also, um, I want my horseshoe kitchen too, so there's no space here in the, for the, um, master bedroom unless I want to walk out into the garage, which I don't want to, so. Um, even drawing, say, because I'm drawing from scratch in SketchUp, I mean, I have to actually change it in SketchUp, so, just have to do some things, like, like I'll give this a uh, four foot clearance, right? Four feet sound good? Four feet sound good. And then, um, want a storage locker here. But I mean, um, in terms of, but I mean, when you use SketchUp, I mean, even, you know, it's just, you know, I mean, still kind of got to know what you're doing, just to avoid problems. And here I'll just make this four inches as usual. Use the rectangle tool. Because this will also include where the, where you get out of the master bedroom. So this isn't actually just showing you how to how to draw a floor. This actually shows you how to draw a floor plan because you know, as you're drawing it, you know you have your basic idea beforehand, but you have to sort of change it up to really make it work. Which I mean, is actually work, but um, but if you want a working design, I mean, it's worth it. So don't be so I mean don't be lazy with it. And as you can see I made it four feet. That's about right because usually even in an entrance for a garage, you know, I mean you still want good um clearance space. Just to make it a com like a comfortable entry. We'll take that and we'll just cut the rest of this one out. Because I want to, I want space for my HVAC and water heating. Um, so I usually like to put it in a separate room. Sometimes for a small garage, people would actually put it right as exposed pieces. I just think it it works, but it looks tacky. So place to hide it. And besides, anyway, I mean, there's always going to be vents on the roof. You know, I mean, um, even though those are ugly too, but I mean. Regardless of whether it's in the garage or in a storage locker, it's still going to have um, to have vents on the roof because, I mean, um, as ugly as they are, they are necessary. Now, as you can see, this will be my entrance way to the master bedroom. Perfect entry. Closet, bathroom. 
So I mean, it's not it's not a terrible house. It actually works. Um, so there's sort of where we are now. And as else, we'll close this off because and. I could just put it like this, but it would look tacky, so this is where sometimes diagonals come into play. Let me just think about how best I want to do this. Interior wall to interior wall. It's usually how I do it to make it like even. And two inches on either side. As you can see for diagonals, see how that pink line is? and it says parallel to edge make sure that it is a pink line so your model isn't messed up because it makes it easier for you to put doors in and stuff and as you can see look parallel to edge whenever you do it this way and it helps to can go over over and out because you'll just trim it later and then do it again on this side and there you have uh, there you have that space and I mean when you draw a floor plan obviously you have to clean it up I mean it even works for AutoCAD users as well I mean this is a form of CAD I mean computer aided design no matter what medium you're using still computer aided because I'm obviously using the computer so but anyway because in the next video I'm gonna show you how to I'm gonna extrude this and turn these into actual walls as you can see here, I just extended these walls out and erased them. And there you have it. And there's your floor plan. Now, another thing that people like to do is actually they'll cut doors out already. Cut out where the doors and windows are. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, before you do that, make um, do the extrusion first. So then you're not having to go back in and redraw everything. Um, because for example, um, as you can see, um, um, I mean, of course, I'm going to go into depth with this in the next video, but um, as you can see, walls are flawless. Um, and this is not the wall height I want, but I will go over that in the next video. But I'm just trying to state to you why it's best not to have... Um, windows and doors already in the floor plan when you draw it. Well, I mean, this is when you draw in Scratch and SketchUp. Now, what ha other things people do is, um, they would actually take a, uh, like an AutoCAD file and import it into SketchUp. Obviously, I can't do that. Why? Because, um, if you down the t version of SketchUp you download, if you download the free version in which I have, you're not able to do you're not able to import a CAD file if you download the pro version which you need to pay for every month um, that will download that will import a CAD file um, or else whatever you else you could do you can make like a JPEG of it you can turn it into a PDF file and then make a JPEG of it and then turn it into a JPEG through paint and then um, cut off what you don't want of the CAD file um, CAD um, JPEG, and you could import it, but um, that's hassle. So I mean, that's part of the reason why I, I just go ahead and draw directly in SketchUp. And obviously, what you see here, it works. But um, but like I said, you know, flawless walls without without all these line unneeded lines and all these openings where you gotta have to go back and redraw everything. Because I will show you here. I want my door, say I want my door here, which I will have, I actually do want my door there, but, I mean, and say I want a window here, in which actually, that's right, I do want, and this is how windows are drawn, in most cases, the line through it, see, would you look at that, now, obviously, your door will not be all the way to your ceiling height, so, you would have to go back in and draw like this. And see also these lines here for windows. 
And that's why you don't want to do that. And you have to do it for every, each and every one of them. Yeah, I'm not about that. I'm about keeping it simple. So what you'll do is, um... Okay, good. That's clean now. And another thing what I'd like to do is, um... Just take this, because I hate this stupid blue color. I'll go over to materials with this paint bucket tool. And my favorite area is colors. Go to this really white color. Shift, click. And, you know, it's just better for me. I mean, it annoys the crap out of me, honestly. So, yeah, um, um, that is my floor plan tutorial. First video series of um, this, I mean, first video of the series of my build a house from scratch. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please rate, comment, subscribe. I hope it helped you. If it did, um, well, like I said, rate, comment, subscribe. And I'd love to hear from you. Another thing is, um, there will be, obvi obviously, there will be more. And I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching, and have a wonderful day. All right. Goodbye, everyone.